everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, I'm Jay, and you're gonna paint along. It's gonna be fun. So grab a paintbrush, grab a model, grab some paints, and let's uh, have a good time. Today I'll be working, I'm gonna keep up my Tyranuary painting challenge. It's going along swimmingly, and today I'll be working on some Tyrant Guard, some of the old-fashioned Tyrant Guard. And if that's done, maybe some Termagants. I have tons of them to paint up. Uh, I have a bunch of guys right now to paint up. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So this cha painting challenge is coming along, and I'm starting to really see empty space where my models boxes used to be and I'm um, gonna slowly integrate them in my army so all is good I hope uh, all your painting challenges out there are going as well as you for it is, as it is for me and uh, let's get painting all right so as you can see here my two goals my two guys for the day are two tyrant guard they're the old-fashioned metal ones they're solid as a rock they're the giant paperweights and uh, yeah I'll get them painted up today it'll be good yeah Tyranuary is coming along. Maybe next week will be month will be Tyrebuary or High February. Either one will be good. Yeah, and just getting in some of uh, my favorite, one of my favorite Reaper paints, Ghost White, into my palette, and then I'll be painting. It'll be good. Um, I just need to clean. Out to the end. But uh, yeah, paint challenge is coming along. I am really seeing progress, and that's what matters in my army. Because uh, it's just, it, you know, I've had these a lot of these models on my shelf sitting around for a long time. And uh, it's good to finally just get them painted and in my army and looking good, and or it's good ish, you know. Obviously, people have commented about this in the comment section. This isn't the highest quality. And I'll admit it, it really isn't. But this is my kind of my tabletop standard quality that I use for my battle reports. My Grey Knights are kind of my highest quality painted army. And, uh... Sorry. So yeah, they're, my Grey Knights are my highest quality painted army. But uh, my Tyranids aren't bad. You know, they're not by any means, like terrible painted. They're way more than three color minimum. So it's all good, you know? What else is new? Uh, by the time this video is posted today, I've had a really successful week as far as videos go. I'm working hard. And by the time this video is posted, it's starting to get chilly in here. Probably should close the door soon. Um, a new How to Play 40K will be up. It's rendering as we speak, or as I speak to you at least, and it is on the reserve phase, so that's good. A new, you know, it tend, people have been really liking the series so far, and it's been pretty fun to film. And that and also, it really does, you know, I've been caught, there's been a couple rules I've caught that I didn't know so far while well, just getting ready to film the videos, so that's good. And, yeah, it's all good stuff, you know, it's, it's really flying along. We're almost, you know, we have one week left of January, and then it's February. This, time flies by, especially when you're keeping busy, but oh my goodness, you know, and when you're having fun. I'm having a good time too. But it, time flies by so fast because it's the end of January. February is going to fly by, you know, it really is. February is going to be a really busy month. Um, I have a convention, which will be fun. I'm going to the Las Vegas Open. I'm not going to play in any games or anything. I'm just going to go and have some fun, chill with the WGC people, meet people, have a good time, you know. Seems like it's a good time, so that'll be good. And yeah, so that's gonna be good. Uh, but that'll be a couple days ago, gone in, in G February, and it's a short month to begin with. It's not a leap year because it's 2015. 2016 will be a leap year. So.
I know I'm painting quasi sloppily, but it's okay. I clean up later with the, the blues and uh, the black red combinations. So he's done. Our mirror should paint between. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the year will fly by, fly by, fly by. I find it's bit really busy. Rubik's outside parking. Sorry, I just had to go make sure Rubik stopped barking. Neighbors don't really appreciate it. They like to walk by this time of night. It's all good. What else? So he has said, um, <clears throat> and there will definitely be a new uh, Q&J tomorrow. So this has been a good week, a successful week. You know, I'm going to keep on top of my videos. I really got to, my goal, my New Year's resolution is really keep on top of my videos. And I'm going to work my freaking butt off to make sure that I do. Um, yeah, because the more I keep up on videos, the better my results will be. This has been a really just awesome month so far. Like I'm, I'm looking at my views, um, and they're m actually much higher than normal. So it's been good. My amount of subscribers I've gained has been much higher than normal. It's been good. So it shows that what I'm doing, I think, I think I'm doing right. You know, or at least what I'm doing is right in the sense people are, are appreciating what I'm doing. So that's really good. You know, my goal is, is to take over the world eventually of miniature wargaming. But, uh, yeah, that's just a joke. But what else? But it, it's really cool. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that what I'm doing is starting to get some recognition. It really is. And, uh. People have been leaving some awesome comments. So it makes me happy. It really does. I'm, uh, this is going to be a very, I'd say important year for my work because I got to try my best to succeed this year. I want to be done and just focusing only on this job at the end of the year. That's my goal. And I'm going to work really hard towards that goal. But I've been putting out battle reports lately, and the battle reports have been good. Uh, this week was an Astra Militarum versus Orcs battle report for the free content. And then the paid content, I didn't have a battle report. I put out a face-off episode. It was um, Swarmlord versus... the oh, it was Swarmlord versus Abaddon in close combat. Who'd win? And the results were actually quite fun. It was a really interesting battle. So, if you're curious, go check out the warp. If you think, you know, who will win. Or in what manner. Because uh, I was quite surprised with how it went down. It was kind of fun. Oops. He's done. The things are so heavy, they, don't, they have a problem standing on my stand. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to add a little white to it. Actually, you know what? I should probably use a lot of this extra gray liner, not gray liner, ghost white, to, I don't want to waste it. And by the time I mix the white in it, it's going to get, you know, I have a lot to mix with the white. So I'm going to use a little bit of it in the short term just to paint a couple gaunts. And I'll make sure it's focused on the gaunt. There we go. Because uh, gaunts are good too. Somebody was really disagreeing with me about uh, Gene Stealers. I'm actually kind of happy that they're having such good luck with Gene Stealers. Maybe I'll try them out again. I haven't tried them in a while. Uh, I've had I've played one game of sevens with them. But the problem is, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I just found they had the same problem as they did in 6th edition. But apparently, um, some of my viewers are having really good times with them. So that's, that's awesome. I should bring back a Steeler list and try them out, you know? And don't be hard-headed towards them. So, uh, to the person who left the comment, um, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yep. So, look at him. He's one jeans to go down. Yeah, it's, I'm stupidly excited. This, this painting challenge, the more it goes on, the more I'm just happy. You know, 
In the next couple of weeks, I'll probably have a pain in Tyran effects. And depending on how this goes, as I said, depending on how February goes, it, I might continue painting Tyranids into March. Because uh, I, I have a chance to just get this army done. You know? And that would be really nice to have an army just almost entirely painted, maybe a model or two left. And that way I can just, you know, put it behind me. Uh, tier orcs and uh, orcs are going to get some love soon. I'm going to paint some orcs on the side of my challenge because I really want to get these grot tanks painted up for my videos. They, I love them. And I'm definitely going to order some more for Adepticon. So Forge World is doing this cool thing right now where you can order models ahead of time. You put reserve on models, and they will bring the models then. Because that way, you know, like when I went to Gen Con, they didn't have any grot tanks. Or they ran out of grot tanks immediately. So I'm going to order maybe one set. Maybe two if I have the money, but probably one. And that way I pay the American funds. I don't pay any uh, shipping. Because I'm picking them up in person. And I get them at uh, Adepticon. That would be pretty nice. You know? That would be pretty nice indeed. So then I have, um, I would have 11 grab tanks. And that'd be good. I'm on my way, you know. They're a really cool item. What else? Um, the warp, this week's painting tutorial in the warp was a uh, mercenaries model from War Machine named Rupert Corvolo. He's the Piper of Ord, and he's just a, he's a bagpiper. He's really cool. He goes around the battlefield, basically. He's one of the mercenaries that people really love because he gives this rule called tough. And tough, for those of you who don't play War Machine or Hordes, tough is, is one of the strongest game mechanics. It's the one that people hate because it can be so powerful if you roll well, if you roll luckily. You know, it'll be it's such a powerful... It's basically the equivalent of Feel No Pain, except... Uh, you're knocked down, so you're easier to hit in following turns if you survive the, the attack. And, uh, unlike Feel No Pain, there's nothing that negates tough. Tough is just tough. It's a 5-up, and you get right back up again if you're dead. So your opponent can do all this intricate, you know, attack craziness to kill your guy, and then he can get right back up again with tough. And people hate it. And there's an army called Trolls. The Troll Blood Army, who all have tough, basically. You know, almost the entire army has tough. And that's why people don't like them. Well, they're one of the most uh, disliked armies in hordes, if not deemed the most liked, disliked army, because of the tough. People don't like the tough because it's a dynamic that people just don't like in War Machine. Everyone's really big on, on uh, bell-shaped curves for statistics, right? Because two dice is different from one dice. One dice is linear. And two dice is, is bell-shaped because, you know, there's an average of, you know, like one in every six rolls should be a seven. There's not an equal probability of, of all events, right? Unlike one, like one dice, everything has the same chance. Me, the odds of me rolling a six is the same as me rolling a one. But with two dice, the odds of me rolling a two is greatly different from me rolling a seven. So... People don't like it. I understand why, but... <laughs> so Rupert's cool. So if you want to check out, once again, check out the warp. You know, I'm going to start hyping the warp. I do... This is not just a commercial for the warp. I agree. If you don't want to do it, or you don't want the money, or you aren't in a country that's available, I respect that. I'm not going to shove it down your throat. I'm not going to do DVD giveaways or anything like that. I just really want... The warp will be a key to my success. And I really like to hype that because, as I said, it's going to be a key to my success. That and free stuff. Like, my free content, to me, has been the best it's ever been. If only my eventual goal. Here's my eventual goal, people. My eventual goal is to get one free tutorial a month. So you'll get four miniature painting one-on-ones, right? Of course, six months after the other, the people in the warp. Because like, right now, the miniature painting one-on-one is in the mid-40s for free and it's in the mid set it's in the low 70s episode 71 i believe or episode 70 or 71 is what i've just finished filming today so 
Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. So you get those. So you get a Minchipane 101 for free every week, which is awesome. That's my goal. That's, as I said, that's my series that I'm most proud of. Uh, every week until I'm done it, you're going to get a, or almost every week you'll, until I'm done it, you'll get the uh, How to Play 40K series. And that'll be good. Uh, there's probably a lot more episodes, at least like another, I, can, I planned another 10 episodes of How to Play 40K. So, next one's obviously going to be movement phase. The movement phase is kind of complicated. I was thinking about how simple it is. Movement is just simple, right? But then, no, because there's so many different types. So, I'll have to cover all the types. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So, every week, how to play 40K, kind of my eventual goal. And then, uh, sorry, I dropped my brush. How, uh, battle report, one every week. You know, that'll be good. That's pretty much been my standard lately anyway. But a battle report a week. Um, and then like a pain with Jay. And then every other week, I would like to do a Q and J. I don't want to do one every week. Um, I just don't have the time, unfortunately. And priority wise, I can paint, I can sit here and paint. And right now it's so much easier to sit here and paint than to film a Q and J. Um, and I'm getting a lot more done. So maybe every other week, because that way, because if I do it every week, people kind of run out of things for me to talk to about, and it gets really circular. So maybe every other week will be good. And as there'll be one this week, and there should be one in two weeks. There may not be one the following two weeks after, because, no, actually there will be probably. And the one after that, there won't be. We'll see. Cool. These guys are looking good for my standard. <laughs> and that'll be my week, you know? I think that'll be good. And then I said once a month, a painting tutorial. Because I still want to give painting tutorials out every now and then for free. And uh, it's just an advertising show how, you know, if you like the painting tutorials, you'd love the warp. Because right now in the warp, there's 30 painting tutorials. 30 plus painting tutorials. You know. There might even be more. I think there's 30, 31. I'm really excited for the Vegas Open. And I finally, I haven't made contact with Owen in a while. Owen from Mini Wargame, for those who are wondering. There's not that many Owens out there anyway, but... Uh, so him and I finally, you know, caught up with each other, see how each other's doing. Uh, he's doing okay. So we're gonna head. We're probably gonna head her to Adepticon together, and uh, he's probably just gonna crash with me because I booked my hotel, you know, like seven months ago. So I have a good hotel. I, I'm in the convention center, and I don't mind help. You know, if, I don't mind helping him out. He kind of forgot to book a hotel, <laughs> and uh, so forget to book a hotel. You're kind of SOL. That rhymes. <laughs> what else is new? Toronto Maple Leafs are sucking. But that's pretty much standard. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, big thing in Canada this week is that Target is closing. Now, those of you who don't live in North America, there's a chain store called, a big, what is it called? A box store? Big box store? Whatever it's called. Box something store. There's a store called, uh, called Target. And Target really dominates in the States. It's like a Walmart. But it has slightly different levels of, of I guess, of uh, stuff. And... It was very, very successful in the States. So they decided to buy Zellers, which was one of the bigger box stores in Canada, and change all of the Zellers to, um, to Targets. That was about a year and nine months ago? Yeah, about a year and nine months ago. And now they just announced this week 
that uh, they're closing. They're done. It turns out they were losing like, just insane amounts of money. I think they lost like a billion dollars last year, or even more than a billion. And that's pretty bad. They estimated they wouldn't turn a profit until 2021 or 2020. 2020 or 2021. So it'd be at least another five years before they even turned a single dollar's profit. And so they decided to pull out of Canada, which it's huge because um, a lot of employees work for a lot of employees work for um, for Target. It's like eighteen thousand employees uh, nationwide. So this is one of the biggest layoffs in recent Canadian history because there's not you know eighteen thousand employees in one day. It's pretty huge. So it's times like that where I'm very thankful that I have a job and. My job doesn't go under. And of course, I'm working hard to get this job off the ground. Yeah. I actually like these old-fashioned tyrant guard. I, I just opened up the box of... I had a box of the new tyrant guard slash hive guard kit. And I decided to go hive guard. And yeah, the, the sad part is I went hive guard and I went hive guard with impaler cannons, which is what I already have tons of, but I really do not like the, the old metal hive guard. They're metal and they're really front top heavy. So they just fall over all the time. So I'm excited to have, that'll be my painting challenge, obviously. And I'm excited to have, uh, you know, a few of them right here. Plus they got great character to them. So, they'll be paying up eventually as well. This week I filmed a battle report. I filmed a battle report yesterday against a really awesome gamer named Stu. And Stu played uh, Nurgle Chaos Space Marines. I'm not going to ruin it and say who wins or anything. But uh, I was playing another fan list. I'm playing lists from viewers lately. And this list was pretty, my list was pretty solid against his, but uh, it was a really fun game. We played Maelstrom War, and neither one of us really got many uh, secure objective cards, which was weird, because we were playing, um, we were playing the one where you can steal each other's objective cards. I forgot what it's called. But uh, basically you can't throw away any C or secure objective blank cards. And your opponent can actually capture those objectives and take your points if you aren't. So during their turn, if they, you know, if you get a secure objective five card and objective five is on the other side of the board uh, and you can't get to it and your opponent gets to it in their turn, they get the card. It's pretty wacky stuff. But the, pro the funniest thing about this game was that neither one of us got a lot of them. I got what, two maybe, I think in five or six turns, I got two. Five turns, maybe? I got two, and... I think he got one or two. So there wasn't much of that. The stealing actually never came into play, I'm pretty sure. It was cool. He has a really cool themed uh, Chaos Space Marine list. And it was Nurgle themed and it was really nice. I loved it. It was nicely painted and uh, I just love the theme lists. You know me, I'm not the most into competitive and I think I'm going to get a little flack for the list I ran, but I ran someone else's list. That's why you can kind of tell it's not my style. But it put both Brash Brothers in the game. So both of my uh, Dread Knights ended up in the same. I've never even used a Dread Knight before. And they are good. They can be dealt with. 
you know, several las cannons to the face, and they kind of disappear. Or you just j throw a squad at them that will tarpet them, and then they just kind of go away because you can ignore them. They'll kill you know a few per turn, but uh, if you can tarpet them, they're tarpeted and you know not going anywhere. Yeah, it was good. Really good game. Um, I'm probably going to be bringing my Grey Knights to Adepticon. I think I made that decision final. Because it's just so much easier to bring a small elite army like that. You know, if I'm doing battle reports with people probably. if Providing there's open gaming, which I heard according to several sources there's going to be open gaming this year at Adepticon. So I'm going to film some battle reports and have a great time, but uh, it's so much easier to bring, you know, a few thousand points of Grey Knights as opposed to a few thousand points of Tyranids, especially when you have limited space in your hotel room and your car and stuff. So I'm probably going to bring Grey Knights. Because like, I, I ran a 1,500-point list yesterday that only had 17 models in it. So that's pretty good um, ratio of points to models if, you're, if you have a limited number of space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really use Hive Guard, uh, Hive Guard, Tyrant Guard. Uh, I've never used them in my own battle reports. I've used them in a couple mini wargaming battle reports. So I gotta try these guys out, probably in combination with the Swarm Lord. The Swarm Lord will make an appearance in one of the battle reports eventually. He's too much fun not to. He's just really expensive. He's like 280 points. He's very overcosted. Especially seeing as the frequency of instant death weapons now. And uh, he only has a 3 up armor save, no invol from shooting. He has an invol from close combat. So. He's very easy to deal with, and he's very slow. He's very slow. Because, uh... He only moves, you know, he can move and run. Turn one. It takes like two or three turns for him to reach you, usually your opponent. And by that point, they either have dealt with him, or they've moved and ignored him. Or maybe, like, the thing is with him, the key is with the Swarm Lord is you got to tie up your opponent and hold them in position with, like, a tarpet unit such as Hormagons or Gaunts. Keep them in Synapse, and then they're fearless, right? And then, if especially a unit against, if you're up against a unit like um, Terminators. Well, Terminators might rock him, actually, but they'll probably kill the Terminators first. That many attacks. He has like six attacks on the charge. Hitting on threes, wounding on usually twos. And, uh, but you just tarp at the, the unit and then wait for him. And he takes a couple turns to get in there, but once he does, he'll eat some stuff to, you know, he'll eat stuff for breakfast. And then the problem is the new challenge rules. I don't, I'm pretty certain you can't. Correct me if I'm wrong, people, in the comments, but I'm pretty sure you can't look out Sir challenge wounds. So if someone challenges the Swarm Lord, uh, and he accepts, obviously, you can't use Tyrant Guard to absorb the wounds. So if your opponent just, if you go against something that has like a Librarian with a Force Weapon, you better kill that Librarian first, because otherwise that, you know, or Grey Knights are just going to be the bane of the Swarm Lord's existence, but they're the bane of Tyranids in general's existence. Um, because their force weapons just destroy monstrous creatures. And Hammerhand got better, right? Hammerhand is now plus two. So if you Hammerhand and force, which is very easy to do with that amount of dice, you walk up to a monstrous creature, hit it on, like most monstrous creatures for the Tyranids, like Carnifex, for example, you hit it on threes, wound on fours, no save, instant killing. So that's pretty scary. But a carnif you know, DAC effects are kind of the way to go now. 
because you just daka 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 and then if you you know by daka faxes i mean um two sets of twin linked devourers with brain linked worms hitting on for carnifex is hitting on fours reroll for hive tyrants hitting on threes reroll only on twos just do a lot as many wounds as you can and hope your opponent fails them <laughs> Necrons are coming up. Necrons are probably, if the rumors are true, there'll be an announcement tomorrow. By the time my Q&J is probably up, there will be an announcement um, about Necrons, hopefully. And that would put him a week from tomorrow, or a week from Saturday. That'd be good. New Necron decks dropping is always handy. Pretty fun. And that's it. And then they're pretty much caught up to date. Sixth edition, seven. Like, I, I consider most of the sixth edition codices very, like, they're almost identical compatibility to seventh. Uh, other than the fact that uh, seventh edition codices have alternate force organization charts, you know, detachments that you can take. And the rules that come along, bonuses that come along with the detachments. And 6th uh, edition don't. But the Warlord traits are the same. Like, you know, they're the same format. Um, they're very much compatible. But it'll be really interesting to see what they do once they hit that wall of everything's up to date, other than Adeptus Aurora does. And a rumor has it right now there might be a Harlequin's Codex. People are, keep telling me. Which will be interesting. So I'm very curious to see what happens. Are they going to keep continuing? Are they going to let, you know, back off the lever? Because now they're into a situation where the oldest Codex is only, you know, the new oldest Codex is only two years old now. It would be, uh, I guess Chaos Space Prince is slightly older than two. And Dark Angels are about two. And that's not Codex Creep at all. It's kind of opposite. That's really quick Codex changeover. And then I'm guessing that if they do that, though, they'll just be a bunch of small Codex changes. You know, Lord. each group will get a Lord of War. Um, each group will get a different detachment. You know, or army, I mean, by group. Um... Will get its own, you know, detachments. Lord of War for most armies. I know Dark Elder can get theirs, but I can kind of predict Emotech. Well, I'm guessing Emotech will be one. Emotech or Trazen for Necrons. You know, I'm guessing they'll remove the ability for most guys to move to troops. Since everything can score now. And it also eliminates the spam lists doing that. You know, there's, oh, you just essentially minimize the cheapest unit and then spam whatever you like. And hope you don't run up against an army that has objective secured. Yeah. But it's going to be crazy. I'm really hoping sisters get some love. Which I think most of you uh, people out there are, as well are in YouTube land. They're kind of the people, they're kind of becoming the people's champion army. That, you know, people are all rooting for them to get a new army. Get some love, new models. Plastic kits would be amazing. If they made plastic kits of the models, they would be so much more successful. They would be awesome. Yeah, this year I'm going to build up a couple new armies, probably. At least one. Well, no, two, probably. 
I'm not going to go into much detail on either. One of them is definitely Imperial Fists. Well, I kind of wait and see. Maybe the, you know, maybe Space Marines will get another Codex this year. That'd be crazy. But you never know. With the uh, speed that they're going? I don't know. This year, well, Necrons, right? Maybe Sisters, maybe Harlequins, if the rumors are right. Those are three. There will only probably be about five codexes released. So maybe by the end of the year, new Dark Angels, new Chaos. You know, there's still the Battle Box. So I can still see them updating those armies and giving them a new coat of paint. You know, as I said, it just... Um, very minimal changes like they did with the Grey Knight Codex. There was no new models out. Very, very little love. Um, is that been his? Yeah. Um, very, you know, not to say love, I mean just very little change. You know, they got a new force organization, new Lord of War. Um, can't take purifiers as troops, couldn't take paladins as troops, and, you know, no new models. So it was a pretty quick codex change. So we'll see. Necrons, it seems like there's going to be a new Necron Overlord, I'm guessing. I think there's a new plastic kit for the Overlord, which is great because I don't like the kit. And hopefully a new Cryptek kit. So once again, the, I'm not a big fan of the kit. The problem is with the staffs and fine cast combined is that the staffs are too, just too uh, fragile. I've broken several staffs. Yeah. You know, that, it hurts when you break the staff of a model. It's really hard to fix. Cause it's very still brittle and fragile. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, hmm. What should I do now? Okay, let's do some uh, carapaces, and then we'll do the others. Yeah, th we're about forty minutes in into this uh, video, so. But yeah, I'm excited. This year is going to be good. I'm going to bust my butt again. I think I'm going to try to, I think my, my goal for this year will be 50, 500 videos. Which I think is a realistic goal. Because seeing as the amount of reviews I do, I think 500 videos is going to, not going to be that hard. Including multi-part reviews and stuff. But, uh, oh, that looks good. We'll see. It might be hard. February will be a really limiting month, I find. I'll, I'm going to really have to get ahead of my videos. Um, for February. Because of the days I'm losing of travel and all that stuff in, in Vegas. And I'm definitely going to film some a lot of stuff in uh, Adepticon. Because at that time I'm driving, so I can bring my camera equipment. And, well, I'm bringing, bring my, I'm probably gonna bring my camera as well, and uh, you know, get the videos there from uh, from Vegas. But uh, for Adepticon, I'm gonna film some battle reports, interviews again. I'm gonna meet up with the WGC again, see how they're doing. I'm guessing uh, Wargamer Girl will also be there. She's a member of the WGC as well. Oh, and of course we'll be there. I don't think, last time I, I caught up with Dan, I don't think Dan's going to come. Dan from formerly Mini Wargaming as well. I think he's going to, because he's heading to Asia, I believe, next week or this week. I think he's might, he might be in Asia right now. So he's going to have to, unfortunately the, the conferences really do take up a lot of money and time. So you can't put all of them every year. So 
So we each choose, you know, which ones we like, and we go to those ones, and we tend to space them out. This, uh, I can't believe I'm going to two conferences three weeks apart. Or like, yeah, they're, they're about a month apart, but what, by the time one ends, the next one begins. It's going to be fun. Yep. So as I always say, if you see me at uh, either the Vegas Open or Adepticon, come talk to me. I'd like to talk to you. I love to meet fans and get feedback and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. I wish I could bring an army with me, but I can't. Not in the cards, unfortunately, for Jan uh, for Vegas. No pun intended. Vegas cards, waka waka. <laughs> so my big question to you is: I'm kind of curious. What do you think? What do you people out there in YouTube land think will happen this year for Games Workshop? Because there is the rumor that 9th edition uh, fantasy might come out. Uh, do you think there, this year will be full of more codices? Do you think there will be a bunch of 6th edition codices being updated? Do you think that the 6th edition codices are going to be staying safe for a while? Um, what do you think? That's my one of my big questions to you guys this week. Is what do you think is in store? Because there's always those reviews, or some of the reviews, the rumor rounds ups on websites, but you really can't trust those anymore these days. If you look up last year's time frames, go ahead and find one of the more, you know, look at January's version of this year, and, you know, they're really, un, un, they're not that reliable. Because it kind of seems like Games Workshop is going, playing as they, you know, is changing their plans as they go along. But, um, really... You know, if you look at the, the release schedule of last year on, like, any of those websites, they aren't really holding true. So. So, yeah, my curiosity is, what do you think, people? I think it's pretty solid new Necrons this month. Right. All right, that's pretty much in stone. Uh, I hope, sisters, we'll see. Um, I'm kind of hoping that Forge World releases some more Serastus Knights. Because they are really cool, and I want to build a Serastus Knight army. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, what else? Sisters? If Sisters got some love, then, as I said, that'd be good. Uh, I'm kind of hoping Dark Angels stay safe for another year, because... Well, if they're not, I'll just you know paint more greenly. But uh, I really like Deathwing. And I'm going to paint up some Ravenwing. There's, de there's definitely going to be a month this year where I focus on Dark Angels, for sure. Because I have 12 months this year, and only three of them are going to Tyranids. And then after Tyranids, Grey Knights may not get a month for a while. Maybe they will. Signar might get a month. Um, Space Marines, you know. But uh, 12 months, that's tons of time for painting. Orcs are definitely going to get a month of painting again. Because they're uh, awesome. Just, yeah. And. But I'm just going to figure out my time. I'm going to keep doing this painting challenge every month, month by month, until I'm done models, which is going to take a while, if ever. But the rate I'm going is really. I'm just happy with the pace I've been keeping because. Uh, as I said, you eventually you just start to notice the amount of paint and models you have and the amount of uh, like shelf space that used to be filled with boxes of new models and now they're gone. And I really don't think that... I don't personally feel that this is going to be a huge year for model releases for 40k. I don't. Because uh, all of their co new codex reviews have been very minimal. I don't... Uh, it's, you know, very few... There's been a couple of new models for a couple of codices... But not like anything in the seventh edition realm has been, you know, that groundbreaking of new models. Let me think. Uh, orcs. Well, orcs got the Morganaut. That was pretty fun and awesome. Um, Tyranids got an update, kind of thing, through all these code these model releases. Grey Knights didn't get anything. 
they lost models. Uh, Space Wolves got Logan's Chariot. And the Murder Fang, or whatever it's called. That was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a big year of releases for models. I could be wrong, obviously. This is just Mullet, I'm guessing. But I, I don't... See, most of their review, new codices aren't going to be that full of model releases. So I don't think there's going to be that much, you know times that this year I'm going to be like, i got to buy this new model. Which is good, because I'm working on painting my models that uh, need love. So, the first key, if you want to finish painting your models, is stop buying new models. You know? And that will happen. What else? Um, yeah. I hope this year's going to be filled with just awesome videos that I'm going to make. And my goal for this year, I don't know, I was thinking of setting a goal for subscribers. And maybe if the goal's hit, give me out like a contest or something. But I'm always concerned that if I do a contest, it'll just bounce up temporarily and then drop the second it can. But 30,000 subscribers is a realistic goal, I think. But then, should I live in the realism, or should I just make a goal like 40,000 subscribers? I'm probably going to hit 20 just before Adepticon. So if I get a 40k, that'd be a pretty crazy number. Maybe I should do that. Put out a video saying if I get 40k subscribers, I'll give away something. I don't know what. Hmm. Maybe a Bane Blade. I think I have a couple Bane Blades that I could paint up to one of my better standards and do that. I think that'd be kind of a cool cool reward. Yeah, that might be cool. Maybe I'll do that. I'll give myself ideas as I paint. This is good. 40K in 2015. And if not, I don't know. It'd be amazing to have 40,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. So, What do you guys think about that? So my big question to you is, what do you think 2015 has in store for us in 40K? Or even War Machine, or Hordes, but I, I know most of you out there are 40K players. What do you think? I'm very curious what you think is going to happen. And the second thing, maybe the other big question is, should I do, like, should I try to do that? And see if, you know, just kind of a, I, I, I don't know, I call them kind of subscriber grabs, but uh, should I do that kind of a subscriber contest where, you know, I did one a long time ago. And uh, when I hit 10,000, I did a prize wasn't very well received and uh but yeah it was cool i sent the person i don't remember what it was i think it was a hive tyrant yeah i remember sending him a hive tyrant but it was cool you know the person got a free hive tyrant and that's all good and uh, i hope they loved it i should always contact them back i forgot their name i'll have to look up see what their name was one because uh, i don't remember it hmm That'd be fun. But I'd have to have a good prize. Maybe a Stompa. Jay Stompa. Or a Bane Blade would be a kind of a fun prize. The reason why I think a Bane Blade was, I think I have a couple of Bane Blades that I would love to paint up, but I don't really have much use for a Bane Blade. You know, I don't play Apocalypse. And I don't, um, yeah, they're basically an Apocalypse model. And I do have factions that could use them, I guess. But, uh, hmm, maybe a Bane Blade. That'd be a good price. Maybe I'll paint one up. We'll see. Just give it to a random subscriber.
I just feel like then people might be subscribed. I like people to subscribe to my channel for my stuff, you know, and really no other reason. That's kind of the, I don't know if that's selfish. I just want people to subscribe for my content. You know, if you love my content, subscribe because I'm going to put out a lot more. And if you don't love my content, you don't have to subscribe. It's not, you know, end of the world if someone doesn't subscribe to me, but um, that's what I want. Like, and, and the thing is with contests I found is that um, you will get subscribers, but a lot of the time they just end up unhappy because their motivation for subscribing is a prize. And so rarely do you see a contest, you know, like, with uh, rarely do you see a long-term lasting effect with contests. Um, but then again, sometimes you do. Like, uh, I guess, because Worthy Painting hasn't put out a single video in a long time since they closed two years ago. Right? And they still have like 17,000 subscribers. I'm guessing it's a bunch of people who just don't realize that they are still subscribed to Worthy Painting because Worthy Painting doesn't put any videos out so they don't ever see it on their feed or something, you know, and they all subscribe because Worthy Painting repeatedly um, offered to give away prizes, and they're big prizes. I remember it was like a Phantom Titan or something like that. An Eldar Phantom Titan Titan was one of the prizes, if not two of the prizes, except they never gave away the prizes because they went bankrupt before they did or they closed before they uh, gave away a prize. But if you look at their numbers, I'm pretty sure they're still at like 17,000 subscribers. It's probably like they haven't put out a video in a long time. and So, I guess you could do it. Maybe I should. I'll ask your opinion on that at the end of the video. That's going to be in the comment section. You people who watch these Painting with Jays, you have an unparalleled amount of weight on my mind that uh, I ask a question and you feed me back and I'm like, all right, I make, I make a lot of decisions. I've made several decisions on this channel based on the feedback from you in Q and, not even from Q and J's, from, uh, well, some from Q and J's as well, but Painting with J has been where I ask you questions. If I get certain feedback, I'm like, sure. Like the feedback regarding the Imperial Knight was really good. And I completely agree with the feedback you gave that um, providing that I give my opponent ample um, it's better to give my opponent ample warning and say I'm bringing one, uh, not necessarily what each one's capable of, but give them warning that I'm bringing Imperial Armor models, make sure it's okay with them, and then they have time to, if they want, to counter. And if I get tailored against, it's better to tailor against my opponents, sorry, it's better, sorry, it's better to be tailored against by my opponents than to bring in a model that will unfairly win for me, because they're coming all the way to play me, you know, I don't want to have an unfair advantage just because I withdrew information from them. I'm not, a, you know, I don't tailor any of my armies for any of my opponents, but uh, it would just be an unfair advantage because they didn't know I'm bringing a Titan. You know, not really, they're kind of mini Titans, but still. So, I think that's a good, very good feedback. I'm going to stop soon because I think we're about eh, four minutes away from an hour. They're coming along. No, I, uh, these guys are going to be painted and based and on the battlefield soon. Maybe next week for a battle report. We'll see. Problem is with the battle reports is that when you film, and I film at 1,500 points, right? There's some models that even when you paint up may not see the light of day very often because of the amount point size, like 1500 points for and having a swarm lord, the swarm lord would take up a, th a fifth of your army. It's 280 points of 1500 point list. You know, that's, that's, you know, just between a fifth and a sixth of your army is one model that can be removed. If you're up against, you know, a gray knight army or an elder army or a tau army or imperial guard, there's just a lot of counters to that swarm lord. So you got to give him, him these Tyrant Guard. But then the Tyrant Guard make it even more expensive of a Death Star unit. And, or the, your opponent just, you know, um, slows him down. They just jump a bunch of models and base to base with him. Now he does have instant death and he does have, you know, AP2 Bone Swords, but uh, he can be countered. 
you know, a bunch of small dudes. If you're up against another Tyranid army, they just throw a bunch of Hormagons and Termagons at him. And he, yeah, he's not that hard to counter, but he's really expensive for your list. So I'll try my best. Maybe we'll put him in a list in the near future. But he's kind of one of those guys that at 2,000 points, he's, he's more balanced. He doesn't take up that much of your army. But um, 1,500, he does take up a lot. I'm glad that these guys are almost done. And I'm going to have two more Tyrant Guard. That's awesome. Or two Tyrant Guard. I didn't have more. I guess two is two more. Two more than zero. But that's good. Two less models I have to paint in the future. I'm kind of excited to show at the end of this painting challenge, no matter how many months it is, my army. It's definitely going to represent a good chunk of my army. Like my orcs, there was a good... You know, there was well over a thousand points unpainted um, off the table, so I didn't show it. You know, because I'm only showing painted. Did I finish like this both sides? Yep. Um, and yeah, I guess they're blind. So. With the Tyranids, they're actually going to be a very small portion of my models unpainted off the table. They're going to be a very large portion of painted and on the table, right? Because maybe there'll be like another high tyrant off the table or something. We'll see. Cool. Look at them done. So we should probably end there. It's going to take a little while for that black to dry. And uh, we're at about an hour. So that's a good amount of time. You know, I hope you got a lot painted down. I got a couple hive. Look at that Tyrant Guard almost done. They'll be, they're about 15 minutes away from being done. And then I got to base them and stuff. But uh, not bad. You know, a couple of big, they're medium sized models. And uh, good stuff there. And I also, you know, base, I got one color on some gaunts. So. Cool. So that concludes another episode of Painting with Jay. Hope you got stuff done. I really hope you did. I got some stuff done, and uh, they'll be on the battlefield shortly, hopefully saving a Swarm Lord from instant death. And, uh, yeah, I hope you got some stuff done. This Tyranuary is going by fast, but it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see what High February has. More Tyranids, I think. Good stuff there. So thank you very much, as always, for watching. Uh, and please leave comments in the comment section down below. So my two big questions to you, first of all, are what do you think is in store for us in 40k this year? What do you think? In your opinion, what do you think? Also, what would you like to see? You know, that'd be good. I really respect that. And second, do you think that I should do some harebrained, like, giant number? Like, if I double my subscribers this year, I'll give away a giant prize. Like a Bane Blade. I think that'd be a good prize. A Bane Blade's like a hundred and, I don't know, something dollars, hundred and eighty dollars a Canadian, so... I think a painted Bane Blade would be kind of cool. I said Bane Blade a lot, but a painted Bane Blade would be a good prize. So we'll see. Let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll take your advice. I highly respect all the opinions of you people who paint with me. You're like my painting buddies, basically. It's like a Google Hangout, but I can't see you, and I highly respect your uh, advice. So please leave it in the comment section down below, and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Till next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with Jay.